Hi everyone, we will be going live in a few seconds. So please stay tuned and would like to welcome you all again for the B-Beacon Cold Chain launch webinar. Okay, uh, good day to everyone who's joined from various parts of the world. This is Prem from the marketing team at Rombi. Uh, welcome to the B Beacon Cold Chain uh, product launch webinar, uh, which we are having today. Uh, a little bit about uh, our company. So Rombi puts you in control of your enterprise, indoors, outdoors, and in transit. And with this uh, endeavor, we have created an on-demand goods and assets monitoring uh, technology that is uh, easy to adopt without any infrastructure upgrade, which is pay as you go, and also scalable on demand. Uh, today, in this webinar session, uh, we are going to talk about a very innovative new product that is disrupting the food and pharma industry. Uh, we plan to have uh, two of our executive team members, uh, Vidya Subramanian and Silesh Mangal. Um, unfortunately though today, uh, Vidya is unable to join us uh, due to a travel uh, emergency. And, uh, but, but we still have uh, Silesh Mangal with us. Uh, a little introduction about Silesh. Uh, Silesh is our Vice President of Engineering, driving all of the uh, development efforts uh, in terms of the platform, uh, the hardware, the sensors, as well as the analytics at Rombi. Um, a little bit about Silesh to begin with. Uh, at the age of 12, uh, Silesh had no clue what was the difference between a robot and a computer. <laughs> so. Uh, I think this uh, fueled his uh, need to learn everything about computers. And today, uh, he, is, uh, he is an expert at developing enterprise and web applications with more than 20 years of experience. Highly passionate uh, about building nimble development teams so that there can be fast-paced, ever-changing development landscapes uh, or to play in fast-paced ever-changing development landscapes uh, to ensure code quality and performance. Uh, Silesh is passionate about object-oriented design, system, and cloud architectures, big data, real-time search, and analytics. He holds a master's in IT from the University of Texas and a bachelor's in engineering from India. Um, welcome, Silesh, uh, to this webinar. Uh, we um, we love to have you as a host, and we hope that the audience can uh, walk home uh, with uh, some technology insights into how uh, they can run their food and pharma supply chains better. Uh, before I hand it over to you, Silesh, um, a little, little, little interesting thought that I thought we will kick this off with. When we talk about supply chains, it's uh, it's probably scary. <laughs> the reason why I say that is uh, when you talk about logistics and supply chain, you're typically talking about uh, goods moving away from the four walls of your facility, um, not just within your warehouse, which means that you have very little control over what is happening. And now let's talk about cold chain, right? Um, add the aspect of the condition of the product to a supply chain, which is already hard to control. And then you have cold chain in the mix. So for all the audience here, 
um, who are dealing with condition sensitive cargo, which could mean cold chain, cool chain, or even ambient moment or specific, special uh, use cases, which could revolve around uh, the, even the humidity uh, parameters that could affect goods. Uh, I look up to Silesh to walk us through the disruptive work that has gone behind the launch of this B-Beacon cold chain technology, which is all about changing the cold chain space from collecting reports to start acting now. Welcome, Silesh. Thanks, Prem, for that wonderful introduction. And I'm still scratching my head. Where did you find that info about me? But <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, one of the downsides of a collaborative enterprise <laughs> like we are is knowing everything about each other. But uh, I think it's 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 very interesting um, in this context uh, because um, technology innovation always needs uh, some. Uh, there's always a purpose uh, with which uh, people set out to do technology innovations. And I think we are blessed with a wonderful team uh, across the company. And I thought I'll highlight that unique point of yours. And sorry for spilling the secret. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's, it's all, uh, I think it's, it's always uh, uh, good to keep things in perspective. Um, no, I, think I, I, I would like to welcome everybody. I think there is a lot that we have in store for you all. Um, and uh, our hope is that you walk away with uh, something uh, uh, revolutionary that uh, we are very proud of and excited about uh, introducing to the world. Um, <clears throat> so uh, without much further ado, let's get, get started. Yes, thank you, Silesh. Uh, just a memo before, just a minute uh, uh, before we get started is I would like to um, get a little bit of uh, insight from our audience. We actually have a huge number of participants uh, from across the globe. Uh, we have a lot of people from the US, uh, from Mexico. Uh, we have folks from Brazil. We have even folks from uh, the east of the Greenwich Mean Time. It's, uh, it's probably midnight for them. And I really appreciate uh, the, the time everyone has taken out to, to join this webinar. Uh, I would like to understand a little bit about the experiment that our audience are doing. Uh, before we hand it over to you when it comes to cold chain technology. Uh, can we have the poll up, please? So um, to everyone who's joined us, I would request you to please let us know if you are experimenting with uh, a real-time cold chain monitoring solution as of today. You can just click the buttons on the screen and we should be able to see the results in a minute. Okay. Uh, assuming the poll is done. Wow, uh, this is interesting, Silesh. Uh, so 61% of the folks on this call have said that they are experimenting with a real-time cold chain solution and 50% aren't. Hmm. So, so that's very interesting data point. In fact, uh, we have the right kind of audience here uh, who will appreciate uh, the value of uh, the, the discussion with, that we have today. Um, and I, I actually wonder uh, the, of the 50% who um, are, are not uh, saying not essentially, is it because uh, they uh, don't have a need or they don't uh, have, uh, they already have something that is going on, right? So it could be, I think, a, a mix of both. Uh, keeping that in mind, um, let's dive right into it. Uh, um, let's look at uh, what is the need of data loggers? Where uh, are we coming from? What legacy? Uh, uh, do we have that we bring in um, that is uh, obviating the need of uh, having a data logger solution? Um, so the story goes as far back as uh, uh, in, in 40s, 30s and 40s when the air conditioning was actually invented and the need to keep things fresh and keep things uh, quality managed and maintained uh, started from there. 
over the years, over the decades, the industry has transformed. Uh, our, our supply chain processes have, have matured, but um, we are still living with a technology that was invented a few decades ago. And as uh, we sort of move into this uh, new era of cloud computing and better sensor uh, availability at, at cost-effective measures, uh, it, it behooves us to relook at that problem and uh, start seeing what benefits uh, the new technology can bring to us. So taking a peek into, into the past and uh, the need of uh, data logger uh, that has created this entire uh, uh, offering, so to speak, uh, where we need to monitor the condition of the goods in transit um, let's look at some of the challenges uh, that, that we face or industry faces today. Um, the, the data loggers essentially a way for us to get the information on real-time temperature of uh, your goods while they're in transit. Um, the, 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 the basic um, um, issue the current solution brings is that data extraction is not easy, right? Uh, there's a wide variety of solutions where you either have to plug in a cable or somebody uh, who knows uh, how these devices work has to go in and recover the device and then fetch the data and then uh, produce the data in some kind of a physical report or, or some kind of a uh, Excel or CSV format. Um, because of this after the fact uh, knowledge, we are not able to empower uh, our, our management teams and, and our people who are in control to actually do something about it. Uh, one very simple example is that you don't even know if the data logger inside your shipment is even working. Is it even collecting data? Let's say it got crushed under a certain payload, it didn't get properly deployed, and you may not even get data from the data logger. You would not know that until the shipment ends somebody goes physically, un uh, recovers this device and tries to fetch the data. So not having a real time uh, visibility into it is a, a very big shortcoming of this technology. And in most cases, uh, currently prevailing solutions are use and throw. You, you, you uh, arm the device, you put it in, you recover it and you throw it away, right? That's the majority of the devices that we have seen in the market. And uh, um, this imposes um, uh, environmental challenge, basically increasing uh, our own waste, and also the solutions are not very financially viable. Let's drill a little deeper and look at the challenges of a particular industry. So for the sake of uh, um, this discussion, I think nothing better than pharma, um, because pharma faces a lot of different challenges uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. When it comes to managing and, and monitoring your shipments, there are issues around um, uh, visibility, right? The lack of visib visibility into the supply chain is, is the root of many, many challenges that pharma industry faces today. Um, the different shipments need to be coordinated. Um, you need to be compliant with the different uh, um, rules and regulations, uh, depending on geography and country you are in, uh, these rules may change. In many cases, um, um, you are doing a lot of import of these uh, pharma uh, goods and uh, um, the level of challenge that comes with it, not having proper paper trail, uh, the requirements of, um, of serialization uh, that require to you, for you to have a complete visibility into the web batch numbers and lot numbers, and as we go into uh, next generation, there will be even more regulation, tighter regulation to provide um, the condition of this transit uh, increases uh, the, the challenge that uh, industry is facing today. Um, not having this uh, uh, actionable intelligence uh, in real time uh, results in spoilage. So even if you do recover data from these data loggers, there is nothing you can do. Um, the excursion already happened and it has already spoiled the drugs. So the, the result of this is ultimately increased penalties and uh, um, uh, dissatisfied customers, uh, essentially. In fact, uh, according to uh, one of the surveys done uh, by FedEx, um, it was revealed that uh, uh, majority of the participants 
felt that the temperature deviations are, are the root of the, the problem that exists in pharma industry and that give rise to the insurance claim that, that uh, the whole industry faces today. In fact, uh, temperature excursion related claims are the number one cause of in transit insurance claims today. Uh, Silesh, this is very interesting. Uh, I have a question um, around the serialization chain that you talked about, uh, because uh, you said that the current technologies do not address it. Uh, which, which drawback in the current technologies surrounding data loggers? Is it real time uh, or the lack of real time data, or is it the inability to get data in time because of the extraction process of data that you talked about, which is dependent on people, that is affecting the inability to have the condition data throughout the serialization chain. So, so let's divide the whole problem into two parts. Um, mm -hmm. What is the real-time aspect of thing, knowing um, while you still have some chance to control it, so if you do come across a temperature excursion, and um, it crosses beyond the threshold of the acceptance limit, you can actually take an action. You can call the driver, you can, you can do certain things uh, while it is happening. So real time, it very interestingly um, sort of uh, provide one aspect of this. The other aspect of this is um, the data in isolation. So even if you are able to recover the data from the device, the data still is in isolation and has to be looked at um, along with everything else by some human. So it becomes quite cumbersome for somebody to put the two and two together because they have to manually bring this data in and then attach it with rest of the manufacturing data and rest of the distribution data. And having to do that manual uh, work um, essentially delay the entire process by weeks. Having it available in real time and pre-integrated enables us to uh, set that chain of custody and seamlessly display the movement of goods from manufacturing to the warehouse, to the, uh, to the loading dock, to in-transit visibility, all the way to the last mile. Great, so it's what, 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 I, what I kind of learned from this is that it's not just about the lack of real-time data collection, but it's also the ability to seamlessly integrate the data with the rest of your enterprise so that you have conditioned data throughout the serialization chain. That is very correct, yes. So let's move our focus a little bit uh, to another industry that faces very similar challenge, um, but in slightly different fashion. And that is, is uh, F&B. Um, in, in case of F&B, um, there is a lot of visual factors available uh, if a uh, uh, good is uh, subjected to temperature excursion or condition is not maintained, you could see the impact on it uh, visually if it has gone uh, across the, the certain limits, right? But in many cases, it may not actually have gone um, to the point of getting completely spoiled. It may have just that the shelf life of that uh, particular good um, is impacted. So the milk that you trust uh, will be uh, lasting for uh, two weeks, may spoil in three days, right? And customer will not know it. However, it will give rise to uh, dissatisfaction among the customer. So the need to have this condition monitored and knowing about these excursions during transit is a very important factor to have increased uh, customer satisfaction and to, to um, um, have better uh, control over the entire supply chain for these F&B companies. And uh, the other factors uh, around um, real-time aspect of it is that um, if there is any contamination that happens uh, because of the bacteria growth at higher uh, temperature levels, uh, how do you trace it? Where exactly did it happen without having this uh, real-time um, knowledge of these kinds of uh, uh, changes, um, it's difficult to trace it and put the, the finger where in this entire process things are breaking down. And even if such uh, cases are um, not very common, having one or two um, such incidences 
could actually be quite detrimental for the for the brand value. So according to this stat that we have here, um, there were uh, about over 400 recalls in US uh, in, in 2017 alone. And uh, the food related incidences in UK, um, last year alone, there were more than half a million um, cases that were reported in one country alone. Hmm. So Silesh, apart from contamination and, um, you know, you were talking about the uh, recalls and all that stuff, which add to your uh, food supply chain costs. Uh, I had an interesting conversation with uh, uh, a gentleman from the, um, from the ice cream uh, industry where uh, they have these uh, standalone refrigerators that are parked in their uh, in the respective grocery chains through which the brand is uh, retained. Uh, so it sounds uh, very interesting to me, the point on your slide, which says that you're not able to trace the condition of your product once it is shipped off. Uh, and even if data loggers can give you that trail till the point of the, of the dealer or the distribution uh, or the secondary warehouse, uh, you don't have that visibility extended to the store. And the second part is you're not able to prevent any incidences from denting the brand uh, when it is outside your custody more than when it's in your custody. Uh, so um, I found this very interesting and I thought I'll bring it up. And if you have any similar experience, this is to share as well on the lack of control beyond your four walls. Right, so, so that's, that's a growing concern. Um, as, as we look at the industry, uh, more and more reliance is uh, uh, shifting to the three PLs and four PLs uh, where customer expects um, um, the supply chain processes to be completely matured. But by the same token, they are putting um, the, their, their goods in the hands of another third party. And at times, the lack of integration between the processes and between the systems give rise to not knowing or uh, subjecting the 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 goodness of these processes in the hands of human error so there are um, integrations that are not perfect there are uh, places where the the inefficiencies can be introduced in the process inadvertently just because the two systems are not tied together right and and having a seamless sensor solution that can tie um, the, the manufacturer to the transporter to the end consumer all into one removes that uh, barrier and removes that, that layer of human error. Yes, exactly. So moving on to, after having seen these errors uh, or issues in the existing solutions, how do we go about uh, solving these problems and what is Rombi's take on this, this problem? So when we started looking at this industry, when we started looking at our, our sensor capabilities, we knew that, that something uh, new can be built and can solve many of these pain points by leveraging the latest cutting edge technologies that we were already working with in, in our other uh, areas. And that made us build a new product. Um, allow me to introduce you all to our B Beacon for Cold Chain. That B -Beacon. is wonderful, Silish. Um, but I would request if we can, we can uh, get a little more insight from our audience before you uh, walk us through this uh, very interesting B Beacon Cold Chain product. Um, I would like to understand, um, you were talking about the challenges around the food and the pharma industry. Uh, from, from, from the people in this uh, webinar room, I'm very curious to see what is their biggest challenge uh, amongst the ones that we talked about. Uh, can we have a quick poll on whether it's the challenge outside of their facilities, whether it's the compliance issues, whether it's the quality issues, uh, or maybe if it's the liability issues or it's the cold chain cost, uh, or maybe it's, it's, it's a mix of all of them, but um, I thought we will have our audience tell us a little bit about that. 
as they are uh, industry experts themselves. Thank you. I would request uh, everyone to vote, please. And you can pick multiple choices too on this poll. So Silesh, the results are streaming and I'll be able to read it out to you in a few seconds. Very interesting. Uh, I think you see it on your screen as well. 52% are still talking about, actually 67% are talking about lack of visibility in transit, where there is no control. 52% um, followed by that are talking about lack of visibility at dealer and point of sale location. Then you have 52% talking about quality issues followed by compliance and insurance premiums. So do you have anything to infer from this? No, I think, I think this is uh, uh, very interesting. And I think um, um, this is very much in line with uh, what we have noticed when we go out and talk to our customers as well. Visibility mm -hmm. being the number one issue, uh, right uh, next followed by, by quality and compliance uh, concerns that, that people have. Um, and, and having the seamless chain of custody that can be reproduced uh, when required. Also being able to do something about it, making it more actionable are, are uh, um, definitely the, the issues of paramount importance. Yes, so, and I'm very excited to see how the BB can cold chain solves that. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so this is exactly what we had in mind when we uh, designed our, our latest um, cutting edge solution. So let's look at what this solution is. So the very core aspect of the solution is our new uh, device, uh, which is based on a very low powered uh, technology uh, called BLE or a low powered Bluetooth. Um, this device is capable of uh, recording lots of different uh, type of sensors, namely uh, temperature, uh, to definitely to start with, uh, and humidity and, and uh, uh, altitude. And this device uh, is roughly about two inch wide and a half inch thick, uh, very portable, um, can go on a single uh, battery for, for uh, years together. And uh, it's NIST certified uh, for uh, uh, making it uh, very pharma grade uh, compatible. And, and very dumbed down device, essentially, there is uh, no sort of configurations to done. Uh, literally, you press a button on it to start a marker, and that uh, enables your um, data collection. Even if you forget about uh, pressing a button, the device is always collecting data on itself. And uh, um, it's very portable. You can literally drop it in, in any package, um, and uh, it will broadcast all the data um, at a regular interval, and it will also record the data and keep it within. The benefits of this device is uh, beyond the portability, it's the reusability, right? So the large battery power um, that, that it has allows us to reuse this device. So you can keep reusing it um, uh, in your shipments back and forth. Um, it can broadcast data in real time. So with combined with another um, uh, device of ours, uh, our main V, um, it can, broadcast data in the real time, and then we can backhaul this data over to our cloud and making this data uh, available in real time, uh, subjected to all kinds of uh, analysis that we do, generate any excursion alerts as we uh, see them in, in real time, and uh, making this intelligence available to our customers in the form of their choice of communication, such as uh, email or SMS, or other ways um, that we integrate with the platform. It comes with a complete zero infrastructure requirement. So everything is, is portable. These devices are completely self-sufficient. You literally pick the device uh, and then you drop it in uh, wherever you need to. Um, there is no uh, cost to 
set these up. There is no infrastructure needed. There is nothing to buy or uh, install to get it started. Um, you place an order, you get a devices, you, you, you um, deploy them and that's it. That's about uh, all it takes for us to get started. Shailesh, there is a couple of interesting questions that are coming in as you talk. Um, do you want me to bring them up to you now or do you want to take them at the end of the webinar? Uh, we can take them in the end of the webinar uh, unless something that is very relevant right here that uh, you can i think uh, there is one uh, if we can answer one of it uh, it would be it, it 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 would be great i'll save the the the, the next one for the end of the webinar um, i also encourage the audience to send in their questions like a couple of uh, folks have here there is a question about how do you get real time data when flying is this something you plan to address uh, as you talk through, or would you like to address this specifically? Right, so when the device is in flight, um, all our devices are flight safe and they're certified on multiple airlines to travel safely. Um, there is no backhaul mechanism for us to get the real time data from the flight. Um, at this point, device automatically goes into recording mode and whatever data is collected, it gets um, gets stored on the device, and uh, as soon as flight uh, touches down, and we are safe to uh, communicate back with the cell towers, we will um, read this device data and sync it with with our platform. And all of this happens automatically. This is all happens automatically. That is right. Uh, there is wow. no human intervention required. Okay, so. Let's take a look at how our solution is different and solve some of the challenges that we discussed in the beginning of the presentation. So, so peeking into the, the flow of current data logger, you essentially order devices, you essentially purchase the devices from the market. And these devices are sitting with you now. You pick one device, you have to enable it by pulling the tab and uh, press a button to start um, the, the temperature recording. And uh, when all of this provisioning is done, uh, you uh, attach this device to a shipment. Uh, this device is collecting data and uh, um, in transit, there is no visibility uh, from many of these devices. And when it reaches to the destination, somebody physically have to go and recover the device. And depending on the device capability, it could be anywhere from uh, device signaling that temperature went above the limit to uh, having a complete graph of uh, uh, entire reading uh, at the regular interval. But all of this essentially requires some manual work in the end. And in practical practicality, we have uh, seen this takes anywhere from few days to few weeks. Because uh, when you have large volumes of these shipments arriving, um, there is a team of people who needs to go recover and uh, produce these reports. And even after the data is recovered, it is still in a format that it can't be consumed. You can individually look at this data, but it is not integrated or um, not available as part of your standard supply chain, your ERP. So um, um, it remains as, as a paper trail. Uh, somebody has to recover if, if something needs to be seen later on, but um, not real time, not electronic. Looking at, at Rombi solution, um, the devices uh, are, are uh, available and they are already attached to the packages. Um, once you uh, uh, go into your smart warehouse uh, and put the device on the um, your packet, from the warehouse level visibility, it the packet get loaded on a shipment. In the truck, you already have a Rombi device that can read this data um, while the truck moves and provide the real-time visibility. When it reaches the destination, the data is already synced with our cloud and is already communicated with the integrations that we have with, uh, let's say, SAP or Oracle or whatever uh, ERP systems that you have. And you can see this in conjunction with your rest of your data, you know, your manufacturing data, your bill of lading, um, your uh, um, your last mile visibility. Um, so you can see a seamless trail of all of this data without any manual work. So what we have done is we have removed these prone to error parts that require human capital 
and that require time to make it all work. Interesting. Uh, so, so in the warehouse or in transit, um, the solution is so simplified, or I would say that it's 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 a service more from what you say, where you know you can you can you can get these devices when you need it. There is no configuration, uh, nothing that needs to be done with the device. You talked about a dumbed down device and everything managed through the cloud platform and you have real-time data that comes in at every step without anybody having to press any buttons or connect any cables to the computer or not even sync um, the data from the device using their smartphone like some of the intermediary immediate solutions which are there in the market today like the bluetooth sensors is that correct that is correct. And in fact, we uh, essentially have twofold uh, options. So if you want to take a look at peek inside that uh, data logger right there, we have those capabilities as well. So with a very simple mobile app that is on your phone, if you walk up to a package and you want to see that what this particular data logger collected and you don't want to go to cloud, you actually have that capability as well. Um, and uh, if you are analyzing and if you're looking at your entire ERP, that data is already synced with, with the cloud platform. Makes sense. And a lot of interesting questions coming your way, Silish. <laughs> I'm making a note of them and we're going to bombard you with it. <laughs> Perfect. That's better. I, I'd like to have audience that uh, is, is um, um, connecting with it. And, and I'm hoping that this is um, uh, at least have some capability of solving some pain points out there. So let's now look at uh, how this solution actually works. So what does it take for us to, to deploy something like this? Um, so in very simple terms, uh, let's take an example of a warehouse. And uh, uh, we have seen this actually live in, in certain geographies around the world. Um, we have warehouses where, um, con con temperature controlled warehouses where somebody physically goes there to tally the temperature of the warehouse inside and uh, uh, manually write it down and uh, keep a paper trail of, of uh, these warehouses. So our solution essentially takes away all this pain uh, where some of these mundane and, and very monotonous boring jobs may actually end up um, um, introducing some human errors. A uh, person may not even go there. He may say, okay, nothing really changes. Let me just make up one more reading. What difference is gonna make? Those kinds of things we completely take off the table. That's one. Second is um, by having a device uh, in the warehouse uh, at the package level, your visibility of the package starts right as soon as um, the package is born. So you are not leaving that package unattended even for a moment. Every step of the way, uh, directly from manufacturing to the storage, uh, we are uh, providing a full trail of the condition of this package. And thirdly, um, the warehouse condition itself uh, is now a part of your. Um, complete visibility chain. So you could uh, do some interesting analytics on top of it and see uh, by season, by time of the day, by geography, uh, what kind of inefficiencies, if any, are there in your storage system and help you control some of the costs that are incurred today to just ensuring the health of these warehouses. So essentially, Sarish, from what I understand, we are able to create a smart warehouse uh, with almost uh, no infrastructural upgrades like wiring, you know, fixing sensors uh, in different corners and stuff like that, right? Yep, none of that. So just uh, put a B, uh, create virtual zones, and you know you can put your beacons onto the pallets, or you can put them in individual cartons if you wish, and you get visibility at a carton level on not only where, not only what temperature it is at in real time, but also in which corner of your warehouse it is. That is correct. So not only we are telling um, the location and the presence of the packet package inside the warehouse, we are also now having um, complete trace on the condition of that package. 
Yeah, so it's like a mix of asset visibility plus condition visibility. That is correct. Okay, now let's head over to um, uh, what if then the good uh, is, is need to be moved out of the smart warehouse uh, and need to be delivered. So the same infrastructure that we have invested in, the package that is already attached with our B-Beacon, which is collecting all the data in the warehouse, now through the lo loading dock uh, gets loaded on the truck. This truck already has a B that is capable of reading all the packages uh, and their beacons uh, on, the, um, on the truck and provide us with the, with the visibility of these items during transit, including their condition, including their location. And if there are any um, excursion um, that happens along the transit, uh, we will get this information in real time. Uh, Rombi platform, uh, Honeycomb, is equipped with a lot of different capabilities, one of which is templates. So you can set templates between your lanes that um, you have certain lanes where you have certain type of shipments that needs to be monitored for a given criteria. Let's say pharma grade typically is uh, two to eight degree monitoring. Uh, we already have templates that can enforce these levels of uh, temperature excursion boundaries. So it, with, with no uh, additional work on customer side, uh, we can set up these shipments uh, automatically and monitor these conditions along the way. So Silesh, there are a lot of questions pouring in, like I told you a few minutes ago. So I wanted to take this opportunity uh, before we proceed uh, to your next slide uh, to, in, to, 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 to provide, uh, so, so some of the questions I had are very specific to uh, individual customer use cases, and I will bring it up at the end of the call. But to the audience, the, the wonderful audience who is there with us today, um, I would offer the opportunity uh, for a controlled beta. We are we are we are actually doing controlled betas with uh, betas with many companies around the globe, um, and we still have a few slots left for these controlled betas. So if you are interested, uh, I would request you to click. Uh, we don't have a button created as yet because. We, uh, I just thought of it, um, would request you to type plus on the comments or set, just send me a question by typing plus or typing yes. Uh, and what I will do is I will ensure that we connect you uh, with our uh, control beta team so they can uh, work with you to understand your use case and maybe deploy a small pilot uh, as part of this beta program where you can be uh, amongst the early adopters of the solution. So just type plus or type yes on comments or the questions panel. Thank you, Silesh. Uh, please move. Sure. Um, so uh, looks like uh, we will uh, quickly open it up for uh, uh, Q&A, uh, but let me just uh, have some closing comments and thoughts. Uh, so this device is already NIST certified. I think there's one question around uh, how do we do this uh, calibration? So uh, for every single device is individually calibrated um, um, by running a test for um, the pharma grade test that we run for uh, NIST certification. Um, we already have our cloud connected with uh, popular ERP solutions like Oracle and SAP. And uh, for other clouds, uh, we have uh, uh, API level integration available. And our devices are uh, 21, CFR part one compliant and uh, they're in uh, fly safety mode. So closing out uh, in the end uh, are our benefits essentially to have uh, completely go from manual to touchless, uh, have the visibility of uh, one of the very important stats for pharma industry, MKT, the mean connect temperature, which basically is, is, a, is a finer way of uh, averaging the temperature that we collect uh, along the way. Um, having that visibility, having alerts based on uh, MKT excursion, not just uh, one single reading uh, excursion, but uh, the entire MKT. Uh, and delivery uh, in full and, and on time, um, we, we basically take that as one of our challenge to, to solve and provide a solution to the industry. Um, and providing, providing this uh, complete visibility without any holes 
in this uh, real time chain of serialization where um, manufacturing to um, to to the to the last mile we can provide uh, condition based monitoring uh, and and provide better uh, serialization capabilities and uh, discourage the use of counterfeiting drugs we hope our solution is able to um, augment in in that in that quest of the industry great silesh uh, i have a i have a, i have a question so um when you talk about real time mkt <laughs> i'm just very curious how you do this because uh, mkt is uh, a logarithmic calculation that is typically done at the end of the trip right right so so if you look at uh, the the basis of mkt essentially uh, the mkt um, is needs to be measured at a regular interval and that regular interval then governs the the accuracy of um your your logarithmic average so what we do is uh, we have smarts in the system where we can identify the pattern of the data in which uh, we we look at um the regular intervals at which the data is collected and based on that we calculate mkt in fact uh, we have a, a paper on this uh, if you are more interested on finding out mkt i think we we have a paper that we we wrote uh, uh, some time back thank you salesh so in the food industry um, the challenge actually shifts a little bit more towards the end consumer and i think there is a huge social aspect of things uh, that that becomes important um i think we are all familiar with the the mishaps that happened with american beef industry or uh, chipotle i think we still have not recovered fully with some of their issues that they had uh, with the food contamination um um having a solution that provides visibility is a step in the right direction towards having this visibility and putting um, um the right sort of processes in place which can let you identify that where in this entire chain uh, things are breaking down or have higher susceptibility or lack of control um that may give rise to such incidences right um, it's it's not a foolproof solution that will avoid every single instance of of this uh, happening but it definitely is um a, a way for us to collect this data and learn from it and make corrective actions going forward to um reduce the the chances of such mishaps happening in in future So, Silesh, if you were to uh, talk about the disruption of these two industries, pharma and food, um, how would you say we are disrupting the food industry uh, differently from the pharma industry? We talked about uh, the control betas that we are doing with uh, many companies, or or I would say a handful of uh, companies today around the globe. what is the feedback that we have from them right so so while i think the the issue of uh, cool chain and cold chain monitoring impact both industries almost uh, unequivocally um i think that the big difference uh, that we see is that uh, pharma it's very difficult uh, to gauge the the quality of the product right i mean if you take a pill you don't know if it is expired or not by looking at it you can't say by smelling it you can't say anything right while the food industry basically the 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 impact is direct consumer i mean if you eat a contaminated food you will see the consequence uh, within the same day right so um both industries face face a slightly different challenge however um um the solution that we have developed uh is is capable of helping in both uh, directions uh, one on one side uh, it helps farm industries to be better compliant and and provide better a uh, visibility um to have uh, the complete serialization uh, chain um uh, available while the food industry basically be uh, sure of uh, uh, finding out any kind of spoilage along the way and stopping it uh, ahead of time also i think another challenge that uh, food industry has is uh, typically um, uh, businesses in food uh, operate on a very very razor uh, thin margins and our solution which is very uh, financially uh, a viable solution very cost effective solution uh helps out um in in providing an option that uh, can be leveraged right away hmm so it's a it's a competitive advantage in other words absolutely yes so if you look at uh, um uh, some of the things that that differentiates our solution from the other um legacy solutions is a strong emphasis on touchless or 
uh, errorless uh, systems that we have built, uh, reusable devices that uh, uh, give rise to um, more um, um, cost-effective solutions and uh, no need for additional human capital to collect any kind of data and a complete CapEx model, um, sorry, complete OpEx model that requires no investment upfront um, makes uh, VBeacon a very um, um, compelling choice. So the future is now with Rombi. <laughs> Thank you, Salish. Um, so about Rombi, uh, we talked uh, a brief instruct a bit with brief introduction in the beginning. So Rombi's goal is uh, through through all that you would have seen uh, in this this presentation is we are striving to put you in control. Now put you in control of your things. Put you in control of your goods, your assets and ultimately your enterprise by using cutting edge uh, IoT technologies in a holistic manner. Um, and from what Silesh talked about, uh, you would have realized that we focus on three important aspects, which is sensing data, making sense of it and integrating it with your enterprise. And also we have a service called B Central where you don't really have to read reports or look at dashboards and you can leave this to a team of trained control tower experts who can take the first line of defense on your behalf. So that's our approach to IoT holistically, which is sensing, making sense and acting on data so that we can ultimately put you in control of your operations. Um, we have operations around the world uh, we, we, we are a global solution, which means our solution works indoors, outdoors, and in transit everywhere in the globe. And we have major offices in uh, uh, eight countries today. So um, I would, uh, uh, if, if you have any questions about our company, and uh, if you'd like to partner with us, uh, if you'd like to uh, try out some of our solutions or, or, or even um, uh, join hands in uh, a technology partnership, uh, please write in to us, uh, sales at rombi.com. Um, as we come to the end of this webinar, Silesh, I would request you to touch upon a little bit about our on-demand uh, business model on your slide. But beyond that, I would also request you uh, I'm not sure if we have slides ready, but if you can talk a little bit about our customers and the customer and partner ecosystem as well, uh, I think it would be very beneficial for the audience here to know how they can engage. Wow, yeah, you do, you do. Absolutely. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, definitely, Prem. So uh, our customers today uh, leveraging our solutions uh, uh, for cold chain in pharma and, and food and beverages and not just that, I think uh, this solution actually um, uh, scales pretty well in other industries as well. So where, wherever there are concerns of, uh, let's say shock, if you are um, you know, shipping something that uh, is susceptible to shock, our sensors can help in that as well. And in many cases we have seen that shock may not immediately impact the, the condition of the good when it is delivered, but it definitely reduces its uh, overall life cycle. So, um, so that's one area. Um, if you have products that um, are uh, they, they need to um, be monitored for humidity, um, that this sensor can can help out as, as well. So uh, pharma and and food and beverages is what we've concentrated today, but there are many other areas that the similar capabilities can be leveraged and uh, can provide uh, results. In the end, uh, we have a few partners um, that we work with, uh, primarily um, around um, enterprise software. We have integrations built uh, with SAP and Oracle. Uh, having partnerships with them help us uh, keep ourselves uh, abreast with technology and bring out the, the cutting edge uh, to the community. Uh, having um, partnership with the telecom providers around the world, um, it's very important for our solution. We are a global solution, which means uh, we work with uh, every um, um, country in the world. We have connectivity options available. So 
um, these partnerships enable us to uh, deliver the best of the breed um, to our customers. And it's not surprising, uh, Silesh, from what you said, uh, you know, we would, we, 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 we have, we have, uh, we'd like to share that, uh, uh, share this very humble, uh, humbly that uh, we've had a lot of coverage around the innovations that uh, that Shailesh and his colleagues have been have been doing uh, uh, on the technology side, on the industry disruption side. So let's uh, move to the questions. We have a lot of them, and I hope we can cover this in the next uh, five minutes. And even if we cannot, uh, we will respond to you. We will make it a point to connect with you and respond to you uh, with the contact information that you've given us on the registration forms to ensure that all your questions are answered if they're not answered by text or live. So the so 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 one of the questions I want to start with uh, is a very interesting one about uh, how you how you support uh, reverse logistics customers send the beacons back to you and receive additional ones who pays the cost of shipping right so romi is a completely uh, 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 closed encapsulated solution so you pay one price and that is uh, a device price per month um, based on your usage everything that is required to ship it to you and then uh, recover back from you is uh, uh, bear by 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 Rombi. Okay, thank you, Sailesh. There is there is one other question about what about triple C certificate? Um, we will have to investigate and come back to you on this one. Great, I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the 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 the. The lady or gentleman who asked this question, I would request you to please write into us so we can respond back. Uh, it's 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 a, it's a, it's an anonymous question that's come up here. Um, then there is um, there is a question on the usability on airlines. Uh, so, like she talked about flight safe. The question here is: airlines have told us they don't allow radios that is cellular on their planes, and also ask about lithium batteries. How do we how do we, how do we how do we solve this? Because I know a lot of customers are tracking air shipment. Correct. So that's a very very good point. And uh, in fact, uh, during our airline certifications, we have to provide uh, evidence of all of these things before we get certification. So um, there are uh, built-in smarts in our devices that they uh, appropriately shut off uh, their communication mechanism. They still continue to record all the parameters around condition. They just do not use the radio. So we comply with uh, all the airline requirements that are there, and um, uh, our devices are certified in in many many airlines that uh, uh, and are in use right now. Great. Uh, there's one question where we talked about the granularity of data. How often is temperature and humidity measured? Uh, I think you answered that, which is every 15 minutes. Uh, you can get as granular as that. Can we also get more granular if needed, Silesh? Yeah, absolutely. So 15 minutes is, is a default that uh, industry uses today, uh, pharma uses today. Uh, our beacons um, are, are completely configurable. Um, so they can be set uh, anywhere from a few seconds uh, to, to um, whatever out that you want to go uh, with. Um, there is a limitation on how much can be stored on the disk, but beyond that, the frequency can be uh, tailored. Now, frequency does have an impact on the battery life. So more uh, frequent you record the data, uh, less uh, battery you will you will gain, but it, it can be tailored. In terms of broadcast, uh, again, that is configurable. Um, our beacons can broadcast anywhere from uh, one second to uh, 30 seconds um, and more. Uh, we typically keep it uh, somewhere between these two numbers uh, to have the, the most impact on the, on the battery. Great. Uh, I'm going to take uh, just two more questions. We have one minute left. So the uh, so gateway needs to travel with the B beacons to receive real time data. Otherwise, it is a data logger until it is in the vicinity of the gateway. Correct. So that is a yes and no. Um, it is a yes uh, answer if uh, you only have the BLE based beacons 
um, <laughs> we are also coming out with other technologies which have direct communication with uh, other kind of towers. And that includes uh, narrowband IoT and uh, uh, SIGFOX based devices. So once we have uh, those devices commercially available, um, you will not require any um, gateway available as such. Yes, so basically you can just use the beacons. Uh, uh, you don't need another device that tags along uh, as the mother device for the beacons. That's correct. Yes, uh, I think we have a question on, on the efficiency and benefits of use cases, but I will save this uh, for 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 follow up with this uh, person who has asked that question, uh, just screening through all the questions that 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 came in. Uh, um, there is a question on whether we can monitor uh, monitor goods in Africa. Yes, we can. Uh, we are working. We have a, a large presence in South Africa as well as the Middle East, covering the African continent. Um, are there current plans to release uh, an Apple version of the app? Uh, I can only find the Android one currently. Silesh, anything on the pipeline? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, we uh, currently only have uh, Android version out available. Um, if you uh, send us an email, Ryan, we have work in progress that is uh, going on right now, and uh, uh, we can actually get you uh, an iOS version. Um, early release of that. I'm anticipating right now, uh, early Q1 is what we're planning to have this app. Great. Uh, I think we answered most, most questions, one specific to use cases and request for demos uh, for the controlled, uh, controlled beta. We will take them uh, post the call. I, 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 I want just one more question. Um, answered before we wind up is uh, the temperature extremes like dry ice shipping. Uh, do we have a probe? Because I know we have something that we attach to the, to the, to the, to the BB can cold chain. Uh, I just want to confirm that uh, before we respond to this uh, question. Right. It'll so, be interesting so, for everybody on the, on, uh, to, to hear this as well. It is indeed interesting, Prem. Um, so, um, monitoring um, cryogenic temperatures is has always been a challenge. And uh, Rombi has developed a solution where the same uh, data logger beacon can actually work with an external probe that can seamlessly attach to its body and uh, can record temperature and then use the beacon to actually broadcast that temperature. So we have that solution right now. Um, it is available on demand because that is uh, addressing very specific use cases. Uh, but from capability perspective, we can do it. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Silesh. Uh, it was extremely informative. Uh, and I, and I hope, hope the audience uh, who have dialed in, dialed in at uh, different times of their respective day from across the globe enjoyed it. Uh, I would request anybody with questions to write in to us uh, at sales at rombi.com. I repeat sales at rombi.com. And for those questions which were unanswered, we will reach out to you and we will connect with you to get you the information that you need. I once again, take this opportunity to thank everybody who joined. Uh, appreciate the time you took and we look forward to having you in our future webinar and events. And, and also uh, to add to this, uh, Prem, I, I would like to urge everybody uh, to, to write to us if this solution uh, will work for you or if the solution will not work for you, we would like to hear from you. Uh, how close do you find this to your use cases? And uh, where do you um, um, see Rombi helping you out with, with your, your uh, um, uh, problem statements? So any uh, feedback that you have um, will be greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Uh, we have a, we have a, a very collaborative relationship with, with product launches. Uh, so uh, the control beta is the opportunity to do this. Uh, so uh, we, we still have very few slots left. <laughs> so if you, if, if you want to do this, please reach out to us now so we can uh, take this forward with you over the course of the week and the next one. Thanks everybody. Thank you Silesh and uh, thanks everybody for attending. We look forward to seeing you again soon.
Thank you.